I'm Ron Doyle and I'm at um, the Beachfront Caravan Park at the Quarantine Bay in Eden. I started Eden Craft back in 1984 in, in Eden, right here. That's why we called it Eden Craft, uh, trying to think of what we could call it. And that's how the name stuck. Oh, look, I'm a motor mechanic, as you know, by trade. Um, like I did, went to school here in Eden, uh, done my apprenticeship here in Eden. And when I was 21, I went out on my own. I've, I've been out ever since, you know. Uh, I started the dealership out there. Um, first I was doing, in that on that site, I was doing mechanical repairs, just built the, the workshop area initially. We had, had a motorcycle shop and we were a marine dealers like for Mariner and Mercury, so and that's how we started off in the boats, you know. We were Haynes dealers, you know, Haynes Hunter dealers. Um, most of the, we sold a lot of private boats and stuff, but we, we mainly sold motors was a, our big thing, you know, like because supplying all the abalone industry, both here and Mallacoota, we did a lot of. When, when Haynes changed over, they, they sold out to a fellow by the name, uh, he was a Chinese developer, and um, they en ended up going into receivership. And then a, 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 a fellow by the name of Kevin Fitzpatrick and his brother-in-law bought into, into Haynes. And I, I got to know him, and uh, I, I said, what did you do with all the old moulds, you know? And um, he said, oh, they're all turned upside down, down in the paddock. I said, what are you going to do with them? He said, I don't know, he's possibly burn them. Anyway, I, I said to him, look, I'd be interested in buying those. And as I said to him, we're, not, we're only interested in commercial, which they weren't in. And uh, so that's how it, it, it ended. We bought everything. How, how did you go about actually acquiring How much did you pay for it? I can't remember, to be honest. But I might have paid something like, um, I might have paid 100000 for them. Because there were so many moulds that we didn't want, I think we had about 25 semi-trailers out of, out of Wacol up there to bring it back to here. And uh, the local Aboriginal community, through one of the elders, wanted to get the young Aboriginals going. So a lot of the moulds that I was never going to use, I sold off to um, the Aboriginal group. And, and which, which moulds were the cream of the crop? The most popular moles was the 17s. We had two decks for that. It's 565. We had two decks for that. The 19R. Then we had the 243 DL, which was what Eric start. I think he still got that mold, which he extended into the 263. It's now called White Pointer, yeah, that Eric's got. Eric used to work for me. This 263 White Pointer, originally it started its life as a 243 Haynes Hunter. Um, I was the original Edencraft builder. We bought the moulds in the mid 80s. We built quite a few 243s, but there was interest in a bigger boat to get away from fitting pods to the boats. We stretched the thing to 263. It worked extremely well. I was surprised how well it does work. The extra waterline length um, overcome a few problems we had in the boat, and hence now 263, eight metre white pointer. That's, that's a big undertaking from not being a boat builder to having owning 25 moulds, had what was going on at the time? How did you manage that process? Well, because we only had a small amount of workers in the factory, I didn't try to do too much, you know. Um, we just only built one boat at a time, sort of, you know. Um, how did you know how to build them? It was pretty basic. Um, we'd been repairing boats and stuff like doing repairs and stuff on them and that. and. Um, um, Eric, when we went, when I, him and I went up and, to, and packed to pack everything up, all the moulds and uh, all the bits and pieces, uh, I left Eric up there for a month, and um, he was in the factory laying up up there, and that's where how he started. He'd never he'd never built boats before that. Not neither of us had. What was it like employing Eric Goose Highland? A bit of a handful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, Eric and I go back a long way, like um, he, he, come, he, he was working for me, I don't know, probably 15, 18 years or so. Um, he started training him as a motorcycle mechanic, then he went into as a marine mechanic and um, yeah, he was doing, used to do fit-ups and 
stuff like that, working on as an outboard mechanic. Very handy guy. He's one of the blokes could turn his hand to anything, Harry. And so, who are your customers now? You've you, you've got this vast range of boats. Talk, talk me through your customers in Eden and and the South Coast, and what are they doing with the boats? Most of our customers, a few of them are game fishing, uh, and the cats are all uh, uh, abalone divers. Uh, built a few for um, commercial divers. Built a lot of boats for t ab divers in Tasmania. Um, used to, we only used to build orders, never built any any stock boats. Yeah. All the cats and the formulas and everything all power with 200 two strokes. Extra long. And what changes did you make from Haynes Hunter? Oh, like wave breakers and pods and things? What? Yeah. Basically, wave breakers, pods, fairings, instead of windscreens on most of our boats, yeah, because they're all from commercial application, you know. And, and built to survey as well. Dive doors, all that sort of thing, because that's what the abalone divers wanted, you know, like for commercial use. Didn't really want windscreens because they all stood up. There's no seats in boats, ab boats and stuff. They never used to sit down. You know, we used to build a grab rail right around the inside of the wave breaker and, yeah. They must have been hard on their boats. Oh yeah, and they used to drive them hard too. What was a boat worth back then, ballpark? Um, I was just looking at some of those photos I gave you. That blue, true blue with the pod on the back, I built the aluminium pod on that. Um, I think that was set up with the 200s on a trailer was 30 grand. You'd probably get that now for it. <laughs> yeah. Easily. Yeah, 30 grand, yeah. With the formula, uh, as you know, when Haynes originally had was building that, that they stopped building it and they introduced the uh, 243 to replace it, which was virtually like a big 19, basically just blowing up, you know. Um, and what were your what were your favourites? Probably the ones that you made the most money out of. But what what were your what were your favourite boats on the water? Look, the 19 was a, a good, you know, just a good fishing boat. Good, for, it carried well for abalone boats and stuff like that. The 19, a lot of the divers here used 19s for years and years before they went to cats and stuff like that. You know, in later years, 565 was probably one of the nicest travelling boats. It was probably, it was probably the best all-round boat, I would say. But it travelled well at low speed, turned the water down, it was a good dry boat. And the 17, 17 R's and L's, they were, they were beautiful hull. Yeah. The 17 was, um, a lot of uh, spear fishermen that used to love the 17s because they, they really travel well through chop, you know, and they, and they liked a bit of power. Most, most of them had 200s on them, the 17s. But what you've got to realise, I guess, in time, like the 17R and that, that, that'd be 50 years old now. And the 565 is probably 40 years old, you know. We built the little sea wasp, which was the, uh, the 13 foot little sea wasp, built quite a few of those. And we built the 445 with the Hornet deck on it, um, which you'd know a little bit about them. Um, what do we have? They had three decks for that, for the 445. We had the C, the Hornet deck, and the R. Yeah. So tell us, uh, tell us about the cat. How did that fit in the scheme of things? 2400 cat. Um, it um, mainly had a pair of 200s on it. Didn't like a lot of weight forward. Like, if all the abalone blokes and that used to stack all their bins aft, right up against the rear transom because that's how it really traveled but what it did it had a really fine entries of the, on the hull where shark cat and all these other ones are very full in the hull up forward you know um, but what it used to do is trap the water and it had a very small hot en entry the opening between the hulls and the rear was very small and you'd, it used to pick up and get like on a pocket of air, you'd feel it. Then all of a sudden you'd feel that air let go and it, it, the same thing happened over and over again, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But it was a very soft riding cat. Yeah. Love chop. Well originally I sold it to um, Greg Salmon who's now got Bass Strait Boats and uh, his mate put, was an ab diver, Paul Bacinas. So I sold it to that. 
It's changed hands two or three times, four times since then, I think. So how, how does it how does it feel when you see an Eden Craft sitting there now, you know, thinking it's got the name of the business you created 40 years ago? That's right. Well, well, just looking at that boat there, um, they've done a good job on it. It's nicely finished, and uh, yeah. but then, as I say, 40 years makes a lot of difference, you know. And if you had to go to sea in, in, in a in a boat that you weren't involved with, what boat would you rate? Which other manufacturers do you rate? Well, an 18 foot shark cat's pretty hard to beat as an all round boat, you know, um, not not with big motors on it, you know, like 100, 115s and that used to be nice on an 18 footer. What, what boats do you own now? Um, I actually own a tinny now. <laughs> That's no Yeah. No, I own a, a, a 570 bow rider in a Quinny with 140 Suzuki on it. But purely the, it's a tinny because I use it at Wombo Lake and not, you know, lots of rocks and oysters and stuff around. We don't, yeah, a tinny's better than a, a glass boat. Yeah.